All right, welcome to Victory, the podcast holiday episode, I guess, because we are all leaving for Hanukkah and Christmas, and Connolly's going to Medellin, and Kevin mm. Dilton. I'm I going guess to I'd... New York, back to New York to see the family. That's nice. Yeah. Excited? Yeah, I'm going to bring my little girl back. Yeah, it's going to be great. And Connolly, you're going to Medellin? I'm going uh, to Medellin. Medellin. What, Medellin. What are you going to do there? Uh, I don't know, but th- we're there for twelve days. I'm gonna wow. do. Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna be a tourist. I'm not gonna be afraid to be a tourist. I'm gonna go. We're gonna go to the hacienda. I'm gonna do the Pablo Escobar tour. Nice. Um, how how are the beaches there? They got I, good beaches. I, I, honestly, I have no idea what to expect other than I've seen pictures. So. They got a lot of lot of yayo. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of yayo. You know what we're gonna do on this podcast episode? What? Legend. Eric Roberts, Academy Award yes. nominee, yes. ER, yes. and our uh, our shroom. Uh, Dealer, guy. presenter, our shroom guy from Entra. She's going to be bad. really the dealer, though? Wasn't really the dealer. No, but since we're talking no, well, he drugs. Was, he was hooking us up. He was hooking yeah, us yeah. up. He wasn't really yeah. the dealer. Since we're Big talking difference. drugs, though, can I tell you what fucking Kevin Dillon does to me the other day? What do you do? I am a little high, which I haven't Weird. done since I had the baby. Three months. I'm a little high, and I'm in a fucking furry onesie. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Dylan FaceTimes me, which nobody FaceTimes me. Dylan doesn't even call probably me. Dylan, <laughs> Dylan, probably if, you if, know if I, I'm FaceTiming you, I got someone with me. Yeah, but dude, if, no. you're, if you're FaceTiming me, I'm nervous. To yeah. be honest with you, I'm like, this guy's in jail. I'm right. going to have to bail him out. Like, any, what's happening? So I pick up. Do you know that? I don't even know if I spoke to you about this. Do what? you know this? I pick up and... It's Baker Mayfield. You're in a high in a onesie. I'm a high in a furry onesie. And you know what Baker Mayfield says to me? I've never met the man in my life. You know, he goes, uh, what the fuck are you wearing? Is that a onesie? <laughs> Dylan, how did you come to be in the company of Baker Mayfield? I was just uh, a, a buddy of mine, Carter, was who Carter Clutchfield works for the Rams. And he was out having having a beer and a bite to eat with Baker. and But he didn't tell me that. He said, hey, come on over. I'm over at... Uh, at the restaurant, and I, I pop by, and Baker was right there. I'm a big Baker fan. So am so, I, but don't I mean, you I loved think him in college. you give me a heads up, like, hey, uh, you know? It's well, like, I figured you won't answer it if you're not looking good. Well, I just thought it was you, so I'm like, <laughs> I don't have to worry about I'll, it. I will never FaceTime you alone, Doug. Now, does I'm going to have someone on there with me. I don't want to make this all about me, but after it's he already— He will do the podcast, by the way. He wants to do the Yes, podcast. let's get him on. But after Great it's, guy. After Great the guy. call's over, does he go, what's wrong with that guy? What's he wearing? Or No, or, no, 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 no. All right. Because I was— he knows who you are. He knows you're. The, he's a big Entourage fan. Well, he that's says, awesome. He's I was watched Entourage eight times. That's pretty cool. And I, yeah. I, I like Baker. And I'm hoping after after last week, I thought he was back because that one of the great comebacks. Yeah, great ever. comeback. Uh, last night was not great, but I still great. No. love him. And I'm hoping for a good the things team. For him. The team's not great. Though. No, let's call and it Kevin, like what's it his mi- what's his mindset like when uh, I don't know a couple days before the game? Is he like hanging out? Did he see what? what yeah, I, no. Yeah, I he wonder was, what uh, these guys are doing. Right? Yeah, yeah, no, totally relaxed, just kicking back. Right. Grabbing a burger and a beer. So we got to talk a little sports since we're talking Baker. But I'm I even though I wrote a, a football show called Day Ones that still may go football. The, the the football. Did Soccer. you watch? <laughs> did you watch the World Cup? Because that game was. You no, know, I didn't. On... I didn't. I didn't watch it. I would have if if the United States was in there. But I just can't really get I that fired up about it. Listen, it. Here, it's here. kind of slow to me. It you was know? awesome. Look, the truth of the matter is, if if you were stumbling upon that and that was the first game you watched, it would be your favorite sport. Because yeah. it was. Well, what was the final score? They won 4 3 in penalty kicks. All right, so yeah. that's great. Right, that's, that's exciting. What I'm it was, and the penalty kicking part is really cool. It was a nail biter. It See, I, I'm, a, I'm against the penalty kicking. I think it's absolutely horrible. But it's that, exciting. Though. It is exciting, but I also, I don't know. My feeling is, and maybe I'm wrong, I feel like like in a lot of these countries, they're going to kill the guys that miss. That's what I feel like. And I go, oh my God, the pressure on them must be so insane. Yeah. Right. It's not, it, it's it's not, just, a, it's not sure. just a coin toss. Those penalty kicks are strategic and psychological. Yeah. Yeah. So much on the line, yeah. the pressure. Yeah. But it beats incredible. a tie. I mean, to you sit through that and have a tie just but, sucks. I, but all I'm saying That's is, and play. I got a lot of people going, well, how long do you want it to play? Tennis players play seven hours in the sun sometimes. It's only two of them, and it's nonstop. So this I, is way different, bro. I wish they would keep it going because I think you want you want oh you want to play sudden death sudden overtime. Death. Yeah, but that being yeah. said, why this match? You call it a match, right? While yeah. this match was so amazing, because you very rarely see in the finals the two best guys play as good a game as they can be. So. And they're on the same team. You know, it's Lionel. They? What so, Messi. Lino, Messi. I, I know Messi. Messi. Messi's the best. Lionel right? Messi. Not Messier. Messi. Not Messi. Oh, I know. Messi. It's Lionel Messi and yeah. um, Lionel. Lionel. Oh, no, Lionel. I said, that's what I just really? said. Really? No, you all said, said it wrong. I said Lionel Messi. 
That's what I said. We can play the tape back if you want. But, um, <laughs> was the, the star, the star, so the star, a week ago, the star of France and Mbappe, they yeah. play on the same team. Oh, they do. That's in, what I in heard. Real life? I, yeah, it's crazy. You sure. Uh, in real life, it is. I mean, it's outside the world. Yo, this, did you see Salt? Did you see? Do you guys know who yes. Salt Bay is? Yes. No. <laughs> Salt, Salt Bay okay. Kev is the guy that does the little thing where he bounces. Sells the seven thousand dollars steaks and he throws like and a he, whole. And salt. he does a little thing where he bounces. You never saw Salt Bay? No. Oh, yeah, the guy's a guy's a total creep. But he, he, does this, <laughs> he does this thing where he he like he finishes his dish and then he sprinkles salt off of his off of his off forearm his onto the onto the thing, which is weird. But it's become like a thing. He crashed the victory celebration. Yeah. Uh, for Argentina, and he's like grabbing. You can see Messi's like, dude, get away from me! Like, yeah. get off of me! And then he. He did the salt bay on the on the World Cup trophy, and then he bit. He this guy broke. Wait, he every, put salt on the trophy. No, he did the the, yeah. the salt bay. Move. He made it about himself. He made it. Well, he he just broke every rule. I mean, forget the Lionel dissed him though. I saw that. He's like, get away from me, yeah. bro. Like this is my moment of my life. What are yeah. you doing? Get the fuck out. It of was kind of like. Do you remember my? Uh, you remember Kenny jumping in all the pictures at the outdoor was, yeah. was Kind of like the but same. But isn't thing. Ronaldo like the best? Too? I think now. I, mean, I think people I consider Messi the best. I don't want to act like goes, I know what the right, hell. I'm we, talking we don't about. really. No, it's, well, you said it's, the the one and two best players in the world. So I was Mbappe, thinking. I believe, is the best young player right now. I think, okay. right? Yeah. So yeah, Messi's Messi is a little 36. is a little older, and Ronaldo's a little older, yeah. right? I mean, they've yeah. been around forever, right? These guys. Yeah. It's crazy that they still play at this at this level. Do you know how many? Uh, you know, do you know how many? And this is not to because I know you'll make fun of me social media. Do you know how many likes Lionel has on his picture with the with the trophy? With Salpe? No, uh, with himself and the trophy. <laughs> how many? It's up to like sixty. Million likes. So I mean, we're we're ignorant, but I will say this: I am sold on on the sport. It's awesome, and that game was unbelievable. But football was unreal this weekend. Yeah. I mean, the Patriots yeah. ending was the worst Did thing I've ever seen. Oh, that that was ridiculous. Since the Pesarchik, it was Giants a tie. Game. It was a tie game. I it was mean, a why tie are you throwing all those backward laterals like you're losing? I, I mean, that was crazy. I what, think they got can you lost. Imagine in him it. having to go back and face Belichick. And I he's mean, a great I, player too, right. and a great Patriot. So it was it was sad. And and now they're talking like, oh, it's time for Belichick. To, I'm so mad. I want Belichick to win one more somehow. It's I, not gonna just, happen. Well, Jesus, he's so nasty. He was a <laughs> big on. entourage fan. Hey, the Giants on. won. Big win for the Giants. Yeah. By the way, Dylan, you posting an LT photo out of nowhere was so it was so well, jarring, and he's my uh, favorite of all I, time. I screwed so. that up because I, I was trying to do a split. With, uh, <laughs> oh, you were trying to do a pick stitch where you had yeah, LT and on I one accidentally side? hit the button, and I could uh, then I just gave up on it. But it was just it, it, it was so jarring because I think everybody's Instagram it is what it is, and you I'm used to seeing. Your face, and all of a sudden you were making a statement about the Giants. So I know you were I very thought, fired. I, I actually thought it was I a pretty cool post. I actually I thought it was it a pretty I'm, cool I'm post. I'm a huge LT fan. Me and, too. Uh, what's his name? What's the guy's uh, number five? Uh, Thibodeau. Yeah. Thibodeau was like LT in that game. It was unreal. I mean, he was a complete stud. Do you think the and Giants are going a, somewhere? I was doing a split screen between the two of them. And I, I, Do you I, feel like the Giants are going somewhere this year? They're going to make the playoffs, I think. It'll be awesome. I mean, I, I mean, think, it's going to be. Yeah, I think they'll make the playoffs. Like we I talked about, I don't LeBron. think they'll get out of the first round. They're over. They're they've overachieved already, which is awesome. Yeah. So I'm excited about it. The Dylan, Dolphins not, are collapsing. Dylan, like, you're not ready for the pick stitch, bro. You're you're new to the you. What you're flying it? around the iPhone. That's no, the, I've done uh, it before, but they've changed. Instagram <laughs> has changed. Instagram has changed. Instagram I actually did a changed. split with uh, Saquon Barkley and uh, Baker Mayfield. And Back what, in the day. And what, what, what I was, was like, the Giants better it. get one of these guys. What app did you use? To do it. On it Instagram. Oh. I don't know how I did so it. So interesting. But I did it back in the day, it. and I, could, I can't do it <laughs> do anymore. Do you think if you got the split right, you could have got the 56 million likes that Lionel Messi got? Nah, nah, no, chance, <laughs> no chance. <laughs> you know, I, funny funny story of random. I just wanted to get this off my chest. Last night, I went to uh, Rite Aid. I'm doing my – I like to go, and I want new toothpaste and new toothbrush. And, you know, I'm like, I want to travel. For the trip. For the trip. Going to Columbia. So, uh, you know, it's the holidays, and I'm walking through the walking through the aisles, and there's a guy next to me. I don't know. I didn't. He had a mask on, but you know, it's that time of year. People are maybe a little COVID paranoid or whatnot. Yeah. Guy had a mask on. I didn't think much of it. I actually was like, <laughs> I was. I didn't ask him a question, but I was kind of thinking out loud. I was like, uh, Yeah, where are the little travel shampoos? And he's like, Oh, I don't know. I don't, so whatever. I didn't think much of it. We're both shopping away. He's loading up his bag. I'm loading up my cart. Where you know, and then as we come back, we like come back together at the cash register, and this dude walked right out the front door. 
He walked right out the front door. What do you with, mean? Without paying? He didn't even now, think Kyle, he was about, wearing a ski mask or a COVID mask? He had a COVID mask on, and he did have a hood up, I guess, in hindsight. So, <laughs> so he robbed the place, you said? He robbed the place, and he had a just gigantic, casually. and he never looked over his shoulder. He just <laughs> walked out the door. I started laughing. I said to the woman, I was like, what? Free giveaway day at Rite Aid? She's like, I'm like, did he just leave? She's like, yeah. Yeah, I was like, well, what? She's like, what do you want me to do? What, you, what am I going to do? Should I, I chase him, should I chase him down? I was like, no, I mean, it's a fair point, but I'm a sucker because I'm online about to pay for all my shit. This guy walked, they didn't call the cops. Nobody got upset. It was the, the craziest thing I've ever seen. It's really sad. LA. And this is Beverly Hills, bro. LA this is, is you know, far, but Beverly Hills right don't aid. do something, though, if they called the cops. That's, that's disappointing. They were, there, was, there was not any kind of, because I even took my time. No police activity, nothing. The guy took all, probably a few hundred dollars worth of stuff and just walked out the door. Wow. So that's it. Don't pay. Just take it and go. That's, that's, the, that's, that's LA right now. It's sad. LA, uh, well, last thing before we go, I am, uh, I'm an official owner of the Chicago Slice Pickleball Ooh. Club. Uh, the disappointing part, because I thought, because our podcast is so enormously huge, and thank you all for the positive reviews for the last couple of weeks. Please keep them coming. They mean a lot to us. But uh, I, I, I didn't even get any uh, shine in the announcement. I was overshadowed by the star power of my team. Who, who, who are your uh, celebrity partners that you didn't get called out in the announcement? Heidi Klum. Um, Bigger than you. They didn't even mention, which is crazy. I mean, we have, uh, and you guys are tennis guys a little bit, but Chrissy Everett and mm -hmm. Gigi Fernandez. I did a commercial with Chris Everett Lloyd for uh, the, the. Remember the Nesty Plunge? Remember the? I, remember that, that yeah, commercial yeah, yeah. I did in like 1981 or 1982? The, I did, the uh, fact is, it was so you long ago. You're still killing her. You took the plunge. Yeah, I took the. You're plunge. You're still calling her Lloyd. She's been divorced from him like 30 years. But oh, uh, sorry. But, but, she was Chris Ever Lloyd at the time. You did yeah. a commercial with her. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty awesome. Went, yeah, yeah. I need I gotta, to see that. I got an autograph. I got to try to find it. Wait, Somebody. Were you 12? Uh, well, it was 80. <laughs> no, it was were, eight. Oh I was eight God, years old. Eight. I was eight years old. But I remember having like a massive crush on her. I was like, I love it. Was I was I was post cognizant. I was supposed to <laughs> <laughs> You're going to reverse right, people and exactly confuse the them, but that's coming up in Eric Roberts, which we actually did. Yeah, the, we recorded our interview with Eric Roberts, which is which is awesome. next, which is a great interview, and especially if you have any interest in film or writing or acting or whatever it is. La lastly, do not, let's talk the Queens Boulevard Film Festival. Kev, you know what's going on, right? Yeah. So yeah. the Queens Boulevard Film Festival, January 15th, submissions are coming in. It's going to be. I got to tell I'm you, well, you got some already? I'm getting more and more oh, yeah. confident. Uh, you showed me more one more of them already that is going to be tough to beat. I mean, that trailer was amazing. Kev, a guy, I guess I could say this, doesn't matter. A guy um, took your. Remember when we did the eulogy episode of the podcast? And yeah. You read the eulogy? He, yeah. he um, animated it. That wasn't the one I was talking about. I was talking about that Queens Boulevard trailer. I was. I mean, oh, there's a, oh, there's a couple. There's a few already. That uh, one guy just animated the eulogy scene and said a, said the Queens Boulevard. That was line. good too. So there's some good ones, and uh, we got some uh, potential sponsors. He did the Queens nice, Boulevard nice. line though, like uh, Rosebud and Citizen Kane. Very low. Very it's hard low. to hear. You had to watch Very it a couple low. of times. But I'm excited, and I think <laughs> I think Rosebud. a lot. I think a lot of people are going to do the stuff over the holidays. So uh, keep them coming, and then uh, also Victory the podcast is going to be coming to Patreon. Which I want to talk to you about. Right. Um, oh, I, I don't know what you're saying, but uh, you know what Patreon is? Yeah, it sounds so like money to me. Are yeah. we going to charge people? Well, for uh, bonus content, additional content, Doug's going to do. I didn't tell you this. Doug's oh. going to do uh, once a month. You're going to do a, a, a writer's Q and A live well, slash seminar. I'm going nice. to do a action an action park happy hour. Will Dylan sell dick pics? Or uh, Dylan is going <laughs> to sell penis pics. But that's the but that's the top tier. You that's need 20, a bigger lens, bro. But that's that's twenty <laughs> bucks a month. That's really top tier. If you really want to see the Dylan. Uh, Dylan selfies, um, so yeah, that'll be fun too. But we're gonna we're gonna start cranking out uh, big content. Wow, it sounds like things are happening. Are you gonna do some Medellin content? Are you um, gonna? Yeah, I am. I'm nice. excited. I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be alive and 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 kicking on Instagram this holiday Whoa, season. So wow, um, we'll see. Maybe I'll do uh, maybe I'll do my uh, Queens Boulevard. Uh, entry in that Medellin would be and awesome. cross genres. That mm. would be very interesting. Maybe I'll do it in Spanish. Because mm. we need your star power, both guys. I wish uh, I wish you would have been part of the Chicago Slice Pickleball Club. Maybe. Do you think Dylan, would have, Dylan and I would have gotten the announcement? 100%. And then by default, they would have had to put you in there. <laughs> Even if it wasn't my name, at least it would have said Entourage or something. And it's not like I'm I'm listed in the big giant press release, like in like paragraph 14. But uh, and we have a big group. But uh, I way think down if you guys at the bottom. Are, by the yeah. way, uh, are we going to talk about these ugly sweaters we got on here? Yeah, yeah. yours is phenomenal. 
Big C, you got nothing going. I, I, I didn't know we were doing the ugly sweater thing. What are you I, I, I called I wanted, you last night about it. What are you I wanted to do a holiday. I mean, everybody's a little tired, which is I'm not mine. Tired. Is like frosty the snowman doing cocaine. Yeah, that what was, was that? I, that was a gift for me to you. But that was <laughs> they sold that at Walmart, which is I mean, so crazy. nuts because obviously Walmart doesn't mess around with cocaine. But they didn't realize no. it, and then it's there. It's clearly everything about it. Let it snow. Let it snow. But let it snow. The guy's got lines chopped up on the table. <laughs> it, it's nuts. Somehow that slips through all. Did, of and do they know now? Did they know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they they pulled, pulled it off. off the this was like five years ago. It was a God. giant story, and they pulled it off the show. Somebody got fired yeah, for having like cocaine on, a sw- <laughs> on an ugly sweater in Walmart. That's yeah. a big no-no. Yeah. Kevin Dillon, these uh, chocolate mushrooms, I obviously will be very careful. I'm I know nothing sure. about it because I haven't tried it, but right. I, I, don't would know just if I, go, ever, I would go light. I mean, I, I don't see a world Dabble where I'm going to do these anytime soon. I, what? I, I don't know. I'm not going to do them in Columbia. Like I said, if we are going to, which I'll bring this up again because everybody keeps DMing me. Oh, the live show in Australia, Dylan. Oh, I forgot about that. But I, first, go. I want to get to the live show in Australia in a second. But first, everyone keeps asking. I've now put six group texts together with uh, the five, six of us, five of us, whatever it is, with Adrian. He's intermittently responded. I, I've offered to do whatever I can do to get this podcast going. And I don't know. Do you have any... I have no update. Okay, I'm, on so the same, I'm on the same channel. I think we should just say, Adrian, can you do this date? And either it's going to happen or not. So live Australia. Dylan. We now have an official offer have to go to Australia. Offer. The end of March, like 24, 25 of March. Yeah. It's like eight or nine days. It's four shows. It'll be Sydney, Melbourne, Perth, and uh, one, other, one other place. Live be, podcasts. It'll be a live show. Yeah. Okay. But it'll be four in a week. Get out there and sell some merch. I, I feel like we're popular. People like us in Australia. All right, but here's w- yeah. we say we're popular, but here's what it has to be because I don't want to fly across the world. I want to go to Australia anyway, but I don't want to be embarrassed and we don't like sell enough tickets. So well, we're going to be out there promoting it. They're so, going to like have have us do it. But if you're listening in Australia and and you want us there, like really show us because and I'll come to Australia anyway just to be there. I've been trying to get there my whole life, but I, I don't want to go to empty places in Australia. Well, that would be embarrassing, Dylan. You, I think you've worked with this guy. He said something that you did with him in 2000. Yeah. Yeah, probably club uh, nightclub appearances. That we're kind gonna of thing. do. We're gonna put a couple nightclub appearances on nice. the end of the live shows. That's easy peasy. That's easy peasy. Yeah, but the yeah. real live podcast. And we're gonna we be on a tour bus. Well, I know, but I show. like to do a real kind of naturally flowing show yeah. rather than kind of scripted out. But yeah, but I know just, you guys. No, we do we just have a maybe a, something a, a little plan just maybe to make sure. Yeah, but uh, you want to go? You're you want? Yeah, of course. And is Jerry in or out? Um. Listen, we have to, you know, we got to, it's, it's about locking up the dates. But listen, you know how it goes. Right now, yeah, that sounds great. But in what, the phone could ring in one second, and then those dates are tough. So we have to just commit to the days and, 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 and well, just Well, you go. guys yeah. let me know, because my life's a little different right now, and it's not so easy for me to last minute go to Australia. Yeah, so it's not so uh, easy yeah. for me either. Yeah. It's, it's no, 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 really I'm saying we got we to gotta really go. Okay, these are the dates. But anyway, if you're listening there, in Australia, there, we, let we, us know you want us to We kind of pulled the trigger on dates that would work for us, theoretically, and now they're checking venues and whatnot. All right, so sounds exciting. We'll have some information soon. So I would really like to go down under. Does Ew. that, does that Ew. work? No, you no, go down, don't go down, you go down on them. That's so weird. <laughs> no bro. good, Mike. So uh, uh, Dave, da- stock tip is is flashing Dude, Dave, shit at me. Dave, who who doesn't come out of pocket for like a, a, a donut, is going to fly himself to Australia and put himself up. Well, what does he want to say? Wants to What's he say? Well, that was the one, uh, it's a trip of a lifetime. Of course, I would love to go. But what I wanted to say and was, he, and he's hoping it co- coincides with the marathon. No, so that's not true either. But um, I wanted to talk about our YouTube channel so you can check this episode out on YouTube. Because we're trying to get every episode out. So, <laughs> all right. So let's really. So sell what this. is what is it, Dave? What is it? You, you you interrupted the flow. So shoot, it's Action Park Media on YouTube. Full episodes. Full episode on Action really? Park Media uh, YouTube. Victory and all the other wonderful shows that we have here at Action Park Media. Subscribe. Well, yeah, look at this, Dave. He's got a sales pitch. Wow. Yeah. He's got a. Sales By the way, we on. haven't talked about that, but Dave. The Action Park Media gang has decided to take over all advertising duties on their own, turn this into a little Glen Gary, Glen Ross shop. But Dave was apparently this high-powered salesman for the New York Islanders, one of the top ticket sales. Is that what you did, Dave? Yep, for, for, three, for like four different teams in the NHL and the NBA. So now the plan is what? Beefy Scotty and Dave fight for the steak knife prize for who can sell more advertising? No, no, it's all team effort. No, nobody's competing with each other. We're all a big team. Oh, my God. He's, he's actually, by the way, you say sales, and he gets a little like uh, a, a little bit more clear. Have you, made a call, have you made any calls yet, Dave? Oh, I'm in the DMs. You're, you're sliding into people's DMs to sell. Have you sold one ad yet? Um, no, I have not. Have you gotten a, <laughs> have you gotten a response back on any of your DMs? I just need a sales deck. 
<laughs> sales deck. It, it, it's the most ridiculous thing I've huh. ever heard in my entire life. He has all the information on the sales deck. This is him Did you have a but sales deck for the New York Islanders? Did they give you a deck? We had a whole pamphlet of prices and seats it is and a, It packages. is a professional fucking organization, Dave. I mean, it's a sports team. It's a little bit different than here. And we, we, we're grassroots. There is no... It could be anything. You could put your stick. You could put your logo on the wall. You could put a uh, pro, you know, product on the desk. There's no, it, 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 all bets are off in 2020. You could tattoo Dylan's face. That's what I'm if saying. You, want. Uh, you know, it's like it's not like a traditional uh, sales job, but whatever. I won't talk about sales anymore. All right, uh, all right. we're good. We're good to go. Eric Roberts. Eric Roberts. After the break. All right, welcome back, <laughs> Victory the Podcast. One of my, honestly, one of my favorite actors, but oh. really. One of my favorite cameos on this show that, you know, I, I mean, Eric Roberts is a legend, Academy Award nominee, Golden Globe nominee, should have won an Emmy for this particular episode of Entourage, but... Uh, no doubt. But Eric Roberts, what's happening? Hey, guys, good to be here. Good to <laughs> Thanks for having me. I gotta, I gotta tell you guys a story, because I, I, don't, I don't know if all you guys know this story, how, how I came to be on your show. I do Entourage. not. Do, do you know the story? I do not. You don't. Okay, here's what it is. I watched that show. I liked that show. And about the fifth time I heard you guys say my name, I call my attorney, whose <laughs> who's, uh, name is Jeff Frankel, because he handles all the writers on that show. So I call him. I say, Jeff, Jeffrey Frankel is the name. He's a cool cat. I've known him for 30 years. Anyway, I call him up and I say, uh, Jeff, if they're going to talk about me, have them have <laughs> me on the show. He goes, I'm going to call you back in five minutes. And he does. And he wow. says, okay, they'd love to have you on the show. One prerequisite. What, dude? What's up? Will you sell mushrooms? <laughs> <laughs> so that's how it came about. By the way, Jeff now, it, yeah, I do remember now because Jeff was my attorney. It was not a prerequisite. I actually remember saying to Jeff, because am I wrong? You're sober, correct? Oh, yeah. Okay, so mm. I said, we have this idea for an episode. Would Eric be down to be the, the drug dealer in the episode? So did, did it... Did you think about it at all? Like, eh, I'd rather do something else, or were you good with that? Not even a little bit. I love the show. I, I, I what, whatever you guys want me to, uh, to, to, to do, under the auspices of my name, let's, let's go to Eric Roberts's. Uh, I just loved it. Yeah, I, mean, I it, just loved it. It was, it was fun as hell. And by the way, Dylan, and I'm glad you're sober, but Dylan brought a, uh, a <laughs> micro dosing <laughs> chocolate bar mushroom, right? Yeah, yeah. buddy, of mine makes these. It's a chocolate bar. And it's uh, packed with mushrooms. Yeah, so I thought so we should There you go. KC, happy birthday. <laughs> Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Merry Christmas. Aww, happy Thank birthday. You. Merry Christmas. Yeah, I never got you nothing. <laughs> well, Eric, before we get into the, the fun of that production of, of our episode of Entourage, I spent my night watching, I watched Runaway Train, you and John Voigt, who I believe you were both nominated for Oscars for that we movie. We were. Thank you. Yeah, it, it's fantastic. Wow. But really, a movie that... I've thought about for so long, and I hadn't seen it in probably a decade, but watched Star 80 last night, which we talked about on Entourage, but you are unreal in that movie, and Bob Fosse, one of the great directors and Broadway directors, I, I just want to talk a little bit about that movie and how that came about, and was that, was that before or after Runaway Train? That was way before Runaway. I think, I think Runaway was 85, uh, Star 80 was 82 when we made it, it came out in 83, but it was 82 when we made it, and... Uh, uh, I, I, it was just um, Bob Fosse and Hal Ashby were my artistic cinematic heroes. And I w had to work for both of them in my lifetime. I had to do it. And, uh, and then um, Bob Fosse was, you know, casting his next movie. And I went up and I auditioned five times. And then um, he asked me to, uh, to, uh, to walk around a room one time. He said, I want to see you walk. And I walk around the room. <laughs> he goes, uh, I was told you were a cripple. I said, really? He goes, yeah, because I had a, I had a, I had had a car accident, you know, the year before. He said, I was told you're a cripple. I said, well, you, you're, uh, you're, uh, you're watching me walk. He goes, yeah, you're not a cripple. Anyway, so, uh, <laughs> so he asked me if I wanted to uh, to make a movie with him, and I said, oh yeah, I do. So, and, what had you done before that? Uh, as far as films, I'd done King of the Gypsies. Paul's case and Raggedy Man with the Sissy right. Spacey. Okay, so yeah. so does, did you have to audition for it or just kind of meet Star Eighty? Yeah. Oh yeah, five times, wow. five times, wow. and uh, did then you, uh, didn't you do something with Michael Denner too? Didn't you start up? Remember Michael Denner? Yeah, th yeah. that 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 is one of my favorite movies I've it's ever a great been. Great movie. Yeah. It's what movie? Miss Lonely Black Hearts. It was an yeah. AFI project, oh. and I 
heard they were making it, and I called them. I hear you're making this movie. I love this novella. I want to be in it. They said, "Sure, come on, man." And nice. so and so and so Michael Dinner gave awesome, it to me awesome just stuff. just because I asked him to. Yeah, yeah, he was nice to me. That's great. Yeah. So you, Michael Dinner, by the way, is a great director. Yeah. Oh no, Dylan. Doubt. Yeah, Dylan no talks about him a lot. You love yeah, Michael. Yeah, he's Dinner. great. Yeah. I love him. Yeah, he's, he's a good cat. Gave me my break, man. Heaven what? help us. Heaven help us. Did he oh, direct yeah. Heaven help us? He directed Heaven help us. Yeah. It's a big break. He's the first hire. My first hire. Yeah. So five times you auditioned for this, because I want everybody to you know two things. Uh, one of my best friends growing up was Paul Schneider, and you played Paul Schneider in the opening of that movie. And we, we had an entourage, Michael Hitchcock, played uh, the variety reporter Michael Hitchcock, uh, played Paul Schneider, who trashed you in, in reviews. But so <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Eric, how, I just want to know how you approach that, because I, I was saying to you before we got on the podcast, I've never seen a character, there's almost always... A character like that, they start out usually, they're charming, and they're, you see all of their things. But this character from minute one of this movie is so creepy and narcissistic, and you feel the psychosis of it. So was that a, kind of a challenge to how do I make this guy relatable at all? And he was. Well, what I believe and have always believed about my, my, uh, my work in that movie is this. What uh, bugs people or what or what you know bothers people or what upsets people or what oh my god's people about about my portrayal is we all see ourselves a little bit in that. So did, uh, did, uh, did, did uh, you leave on your phone? He did. Cut. <laughs> okay, we're going again. Okay, cut, cut. Nice Everybody turn dog. off your phone. By the way, I never have my ringer on ever, by the way. <laughs> just so just so people know, we're talking about a movie called Star 80 directed by Bob Fosse, who is just a phenomenal director. And I would encourage any young actor or filmmaker, or whoever, it, it, check this movie out. And it's based on a true story about the, the murder of Dorothy Stratton, a, a, a playmate. And it's just a creepy, eerily real story. So yeah. go ahead, Eric. Just wanted to give a little context for that. Oh, where was I? Um, you were saying uh, five times you read, or no, Doug was saying the characters are, is, was so unlikable. Yeah. But you said what you always think about when you're starting a character because this guy was so unlikable. So. Well, you... you, you um you have to find a way to like them because if you don't like them, you play at them. You don't play them. And you have to like who you're playing, even when they're a-holes. You have to find yeah. a way to make them you or to make you them. And when that, when that happens, you have an affection for them. Even if it's not, not really conscious, you have an affinity because you're in your psyche, you're, you're, like, you're like trying to match up with them. So, so you have this thing, this little quiet private marriage going on that that you that you can't share with people because it sounds so psycho so you have to leave it alone you have to leave it at home you know the understanding of it and uh, so it, it it's 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 hard because it's not fun and it's only fun if after the accomplishment of doing it then oh god that was i did it oh god that was so great but the actual doing it is nauseating yeah and uh, it's hard and it's also kind of embarrassing because you open yourself up to real vulnerability, like 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 the scene at the mansion, when, Playboy Mansion. Yeah, yeah. and um, I mean, he was just he was a child. He was an eight year old boy in heaven, and uh, but you can't be cute. You have to be what everybody feels, which is a little bit embarrassing. So that's why I think to to watch a movie is so hard because we all have been a part of Paul in our lives many times, even though we're not Paul. We're not a-holes that, that are going to you know, blow, blow, blow people's brains out. But that, that scene is so amazing, because, and, and it, it relates to Entourage, because obviously we dealt with the Hollywood landscape a lot, and it's so real, because I think we all know a character like that who, yeah. who walks into the scene around all these celebrities and either thinks they own the place or is trying their best to. And I, I think that was also... You know, the one scene where you really got to look at him was after that, when he felt like he made a fool of himself or, or, or this and that. But how, how did you approach that scene? And do you know a guy? And I'm not talking about the murdering part of it, but those guys who just walk into, a, you know, a scene with Hugh Hefner and all of these other celebrities and just try to take over the whole room. Okay, Bob Fosse told me a story once. And um, many times I use this, this understanding of this story in... Paul's reaction to things that, that, that were bigger than he was. And it's this. He was in love with Jessica Lange, Bob Fosse was, and they were having, in his description, a 
torrid affair, <laughs> and uh, they were they were madly in love with each other. And then and then one day she said she had to go meet a friend. <laughs> Who's your friend? His name is Misha. We're going to have lunch together. Blah blah blah. Anyway, Misha was Berezhnikov, <laughs> and uh, so in the end result. He says, so I lost out to a better dancer. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 uh, so that being said, because he was crushed, because it, 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 was, it was only a, after, after she left to go meet Misha that he, that he realized who Misha was. So he's like, wow, I can't even contend. That's how he felt. <laughs> and uh, he, uh, he, uh, he uh, told me this story, I think, because of Paul Snyder. I don't think he told me this story to be social about it, uh, about his life, I right. tell me the story because of Paul Snyder, and so I would use that over and over again as the impact of Poof, oh my God, it's bigger than I am, so I have to fake, or I have to do whatever I have to do in the script that you know he was doing, and uh, Paul was Paul. What 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 I also think makes people uncomfortable to watch Paul is. There are a lot of them. I was Paul's say, are a dime right. a dozen, dude. Yeah. We all know several. We're all in a room with at least one of them right now, maybe. I mean, <laughs> Dylan, I think. Dylan, I think Dylan. I, didn't Dylan. Want to I was going with Connolly, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know, yeah. But how, I think how deep do you get into a character like that? Because I mean, obviously, this is not that to say that. You, is that one where you have to go a little bit method or kind of keep to yourself? Or is, was that different than other characters in terms of preparation? And If you don't, it's a TV movie. Right. And if you do, it's an experience. And uh, I got lost in that part a little bit. But I had, some, I had a great leader. I had Bob Fosse. In right. fact, in fact uh, the most personal direction I've ever gotten, and I've, I've told this to the to the press a few times but but one day I'm doing a scene in my underwear with a guitar and I mess up the song so I say cut well you don't say cut on a Fosse set unless you're Fosse <laughs> and he goes what the F are you doing I said I messed up he goes ah damn it <laughs> and this huge sound say to Zoetrope it's as big as a f effing football field he like walks across it come here he's he's Summoning me to have a conference, <laughs> and but it, it, it's like it's like in front of the crew and everything. And I walk over there in my underwear, holding my guitar, <laughs> and he says, "Look at me." I said, "I'm looking at you." He goes, "Look at me," and he's right in my face. I said, "I'm looking at you." <laughs> he goes, "Okay, you're playing me. If I weren't successful, <laughs> do, do you understand?" <laughs> and I did because he and I had been on the road together for months and you know, getting you know do, doing doing prep in three cities, and uh, we knew each other. We 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 were goombas. We were. I loved him. I worshipped him. And also, he 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 like lived up to it. And he was cool. And he was smart. And he was funny. And he was a speed freak. And uh, and he, uh, yeah. You I, know what's so, what's so interesting is because, it, in some ways, and why I have this obsession with this movie and always did, it, it's like the anti entourage. But it does speak to so much more than the outsiders because you do have. And Fosse, I'm sure, had some some craziness of his own. Peter Bogdanovich, who's you know one of the most famous directors of all time, Last Picture Show. Who I, I don't know why why couldn't they name him? Why did they have to make him a fake character? But but I just want to get into that for a second because he was in love with Dorothy Stratton, who Paul Snyder killed, and then marries after she dies. Marries. I know. Her little sister, and oh, that it's is heartbreakingly weird. It's bizarre. I know. The other thing well, too about this movie, Eric, you know, and and this is for people listening. They made this movie not that long after it happened. It's not like, hey, this incident happened 25, 30 years ago. What was it? A couple of years after it happened? Eighteen months it had happened, Jeez, and we started wow. production. Yeah. yeah, but that but, changes things. But also, yeah. but what I what I was saying is, it, it speaks to so much of Hollywood, and not just the loser outsider, but the actual. People inside who become, which, you know, the Entourage movie was about a guy obsessed with a, with a woman, and it happens all the time. And so did you know Bogdanovich, and what the fuck was up with him? <laughs> well, okay, Fosse and I got, got to really close in our research, and one day we're at the Comstock Hotel. We're uh, on, the, on the final leg of research. we just gotten back from Vancouver. We're the Comstock Hotel that I, I think it's called something else now, but it was the... Comstock then, and uh, he comes and banging on my door at like you know, seven thirty in the morning. Let's go, let's go! Like, I, I, down, I'm not ready. Okay, well, blah, blah, blah. and he has a seat on my bed. I go in the bathroom to like you know, brush my teeth and my my like final touches to like you know walk out the door, and the phone rings. I say, um, 
answer my phone. He said, I'm not answering your phone. So I walk out. Damn it. I grabbed the phone. Hello. And it's Bogdanovich. And he wants to talk to me. <laughs> so I got, I got Bob Foss's head, head against my head and the phone in between both <laughs> our ears. Amazing. And we're talking to Bogdanovich. And Bogdanovich says, um, <laughs> so I hear you're making a movie. <laughs> yeah. And I say, yeah. And it's about, you know, Dorothy. Yes. And I hear you're playing Paul. Yes. Okay. And he, and he, and he goes on and on about what a great actor he thinks I am. He loved he loved my first foray into movies, King of the Gypsies. God, I was wonderful. I held my own with all those great veterans, blah, blah, blah. He was so sweet and nice and all this. Anyway, what can I do to get you not to make this movie? How much are you making? I said, well, I can't, I can't, I can't discuss that with you. Well, you know, money's no issue. There's no issue. You know, maybe in you know, a future job's no issue. He was like, he was like, yeah. he was like, he was like telling me to like throw the movie away. And I said, uh, well, I'll talk to Bob Fosse about this, and I'll see. And he's like, no, you're not talk to Bob about it. I, I, this is just, you know, our, our conversation, you know. But it was so funny. Bob, wow. uh, Bob, uh, Bob uh, Fosse kept saying, keep talking, keep talking, keep talking. <laughs> he was having so much fun listening. I mean, that's, and it's amazing. 18 yeah. months. You know? Yeah. I mean, he was in love with Sybil Shepard after the last picture show, and then he's in love with Dorothy Stratton, you know, right. before. And, and to think he, at the time that, you know, Polanski's, Wife was murdered, and Bogdanovich, two of the most famous directors at the time, that both had their their. I hadn't even thought about that. I, I mean, it's it's just really that's far out to think about. Yeah, it. yeah. Hey, Eric, I, I saw you. I uh, was watching an interview and, and that you did, and you were saying something, and and I've heard I've heard this before, but I wonder how true it is. You were, you said that at, at a certain point, whether you were craft service, the director or the studio head, you were on cocaine on sets. Is that true? Like was cocaine that rampant on film sets in the seventies and eighties? Was it? No. What I what I said was the uh, the uh, the uh, the accord is this. You know, back in the seventies and the early eighties, everybody on a movie set was on that drug, from the executive pr producer to craft service. They were right. all doing that drug, and wow. uh, that drug was just everywhere. And then Twilight Zone happened. You know, the accident happened, and Vic Morrow kind of drugs were. A big no-no. Then from then on, it was not cool to have drugs on a set. So they, so they, they like all vanished for a while. Wow! But they have come back. So yeah. did you ever? I mean, it's crazy. And uh, especially in Star know. Eighty, did you <laughs> act while you were on drugs? Dylan used to get drunk. <laughs> I, I, I never did. I never did any drugs. As a matter of fact, I can't even imagine doing cocaine and acting. I mean, that's I can't. A, I sounds can't. like a horrible combination. I can't even do with. drugs and talk because I have trouble talking anyway. And if I do drugs, I cannot speak once I'm on anything. Well, yeah. I, I I don't want to make that's this just whole a crazy thing to think about. Everybody being high on cocaine yeah. feels dangerous. I hate to say no, it, but I, I don't want to make this whole episode. And about it's not an exaggeration, by the way. That's not, oh, everybody was high. Oh, blah, blah. no, no, everybody was high, dude. It, but, it was yeah. far out. And, was, and I, don't I missed it. out on it because I was there, but I guess they didn't invite me to the party. Well, they knew you were a rookie, and they were afraid <laughs> of what might happen if we got you on a little. But the blow. amazing thing about the, about that performance in Star Eighty is you you do feel just amped up the entire time it's so you know even though i know you and watching it last night i'm like this is really one of the creepiest characters <laughs> yeah. i've ever seen and it's ex it's it's stressful to watch it is yeah. and you don't yeah. fall out of it Fair. for a second and i'm imagining at that time you weren't that well known so the character must have just fucking blown people away and, and I do think it's really interesting for anyone to watch because it, it must have been good auditions to get that role uh, was it tough to let that character go to not at all I mean dude. when you go <laughs> home like, you just like yeah that's uh, that's like saying when you have a pair of shoes that don't fit is it is it hard to take those off? <laughs> no, it's they really fly not. Fly off your it's feet. It's really not hard to get out of these. <laughs> yeah. no, no, it was so easy to drop it. <laughs> yes. I was nice. done. Yeah. Well, well, let's talk about Pope of Greenwich Village, right? I mean, that's oh, the. This it. is like one of my favorite my movies favorite. of all time, right, Dylan? That you are a Pope of Greenwich huge, Village guy. Huge, but huge. But also Kevin Connolly. You know, we talk a lot. Stuart Rosenberg, the director of Pope of Greenwich Village, was my teacher at AFI. He's the guy that said you can't carry your work. He said you, you don't travel, you don't with, travel your film. with your film. Let it go, and people decide what it is, and you don't get to. Explain oh, it. he so, directed Pope of Greenwich Village? Yeah. That's Here's so the story on that movie. So uh, I get offered that movie in January of that year, and they send me the book and the script, Pick Apart, Polly or Charlie. So <laughs> I, I read wow. the book, I read the script, and I pick Polly. And I call I call Koch and Kirkwood, and we're all on the phone, and I say, I, I want to play Polly. And they say, well, we kind of wanted you to pick Charlie. And I said, but I like Polly. It's a better part. And they said, Okay. If that's what you want, that's what we're doing. Okay, um, but I got to talk to you guys about about how I want to play the part because I'm not going to play it as written. He's he's like written as a 
tough, dumb thug. That's been done to death. I've done it to death. I, I, I don't want to play that. I want to play a mama's boy who wants to, uh, to be a tough thug, but is not. That's what I want to play. And they said, Eric, whatever you want to do, we're hiring you because you're brilliant. We told you to pick a part. You picked a part. Go. I said, thanks, guys. <laughs> so I started dropping weight, had my hair permed. But I got ready, 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 ready. Eight months I had. So I had a lot of time. Those were the old days, guys. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, right. <laughs> and, you don't and, get that anymore. And then, and then, and then I show up, and we get we get a week of rehearsal. You know, if we start to shoot, those were the. I old was gonna days. say you yeah. don't get that either. You don't right? get Jesus. that. <laughs> and uh, so after the third day of rehearsal, the then director asked me to stay after and talk to him. So I do, and he says, "We're all by ourselves in this room." He goes, "Why are you so skinny? <laughs> like, like like it's a drug issue?" I said, "Cause I want to be a walking spaz attack." He goes, why did you perm your hair? <laughs> I said, same thing, walking spaz attack. He goes, what the F is a walking spaz attack? I said, it's, you know, John Belushi, only skinny. He goes, <laughs> he goes dude, this guy's a tough thug. I said, that's how he's written. But I told the, the, uh, the bosses that I was not going to play it that way, that that's kind of, you know, cliche these days. So I was going to play something different. I don't like it, he says. I, I would like you to resign. Well, you got to tell what? us who this director is. In a minute. <laughs> He's getting there. So I said, uh, well, I was going nowhere. I've been living this guy for eight months. I'm going nowhere, dude. But I go, well, you know, let me think about it, you know. So I take a walk around the Mayflower Hotel thinking, what the F do I do about this? this is, I've never been so in love with a, with, a, with a job that asked me to give up. How weird. I don't understand. So I go up to a, to a Mickey Walks room. <laughs> hey, Ace, what's up? Mickey, the, uh, the uh, director asked me to resign. What? So we called the producers, Koch and Kirkwood, and we tell them the story. And they fired that guy, and they bring in our man. Wow. So you loved Stewart. Oh, yeah. Stewart was one of the most wonderful things that's ever happened to me, dude. So, but who was the director, just so we could, are we allowed to say that? Uh, I'll let you find it on your own. Okay. I'm sure it's out there. But Stuart Rosenberg, who I've never been a student, I've never been into school, was the only teacher... I've ever had that I was like, this guy is so amazing. He could watch anyone's student sure. films as bad as they were and, and find something productive. He also, like Darren Aronofsky was in my class. He saw his like little five-minute film and instantaneously was like, this guy. So, so tell me about working with him because he's, he, he's gone and he's made some great films and TV director. He was very specific and he understood an actor who owns a character. He understood that. And he would talk to the character, you know, I need this from you. I, and he would be talking to the character, not, not, not the actor. And uh, he was just a cool cat. And he was also very gentle. But he was very specific. There was, there was no kind of like this stuff. It was always very specific. And, uh, and he, Mickey, and I really bonded. And we, we, were, we were the three musketeers a little bit. And uh, um, uh, like, and, he, and he also gave us freedom. Like we have a scene after, after I lose my thumb and, uh, and I'm, in, I'm in Mickey's apartment and, and, uh, and, and he brings me soup. And uh, uh, he said, uh, g give me some kind of, some, uh, some, uh, some kind of, you know, cocky wop thing about soup and bread, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I'm like, okay. And so my favorite ad lib I ever said in my life is in that movie. I get my soup and my bread, and I say, white bread. No one of these wasps got no color. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it was just that part, and I, and Mickey, and Stuart... We're married, man, and we just made a good movie together. And well, as I saying, do you think it shows on, you know, it shows uh, on screen, right? Yeah. I mean, the, and your characters, I think one of the greatest characters of all time. It's just great, oh, it's, and it's shocking that the dude. first director couldn't see that. But yeah, he, I mean, he didn't agree with me. It's yeah, amazing well. though, because we talked about Vince doing the remake of Pope of Greenwich Village, I believe. <laughs> so, Eric, you you had a big influence on Entourage long before you came in, but because you, of those movies, were always reference points for our yeah, because they R eighty and Pope of Greenwich. They Village. meant yeah. so yeah. much to right. to us. And so, Eric, do you like to? Dylan hates it, by the way. Do you like to be directed? Because obviously, you came to that movie with this this character. Do you like to be? No, directed? wait, wait, hold on now. That's not true. I always I not love by direction. Me. I, I love always, direction. Connolly will tell you that it's when true. he directed me. Just not for me. No, no, <laughs> I, I'm just I love joking. your direction I'm just too. Joking. I'm just joking, but what, I just what, don't know he's a great. 
what <laughs> I like to do is to is to get like five or eight like like choices in anything. And then go show my boss. Okay, I have eight choices. Which one do you want? <laughs> oh, you do? Yeah. Wow. And uh, and or or if if I don't have that that uh, kind of time or rehearsal, I just ask him. You know, what do you want to see? Because I think I can do anything. So, so what do you want to see? I'm going to give it to you. That's, <laughs> and, that's uh, great. And it's just fun for me. And. Uh, I, I love acting like I love my wife all day, every day. We have the best jobs on the planet. I've seen the planet, guys. Yeah. We have the best jobs there are, period. There are no better jobs. And sometimes they even pay us well. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean. Back it, in the old days, maybe. <laughs> the you know, 80s. But the 80s great. Oh, my God. <laughs> but it's, the longevity of your career, I mean, it's, it's crazy to, to, you know, it's so hard to do. And then you watch a movie, you know, uh, like, like The Dark Knight. Right and Heath Ledger and there you are. I mean, how how have you how have you just kept it going as long as you have? I mean, is it just is well, it not, just the talent not, or the not, love for acting? Not not to you know belittle you, <laughs> but it's luck, dude. I got to be honest with you because what what happened was I could work every second of every day of my life. I love being an actor like I love my wife. I love being an actor and uh, and but but um, I made you know, two to four movies a year. Blah blah blah. You know and then which is you know, too many they say. And then, and then they took film, and we have digital. So everybody who owned their own camera became a studio, and they started calling me directly. So my wife says we get like 30 offers every day from all over the world. Come be in my movie, Eric. So my wife goes, we have lots of offers. Some are for real money. Some aren't. But there are tons of offers. Do you want to go pursue this? They're all over the world. I said, yeah, let's go do it. So we kind of went around the world twice, <laughs> and then and then she started waving goodbye to me. See, I have fun, <laughs> and, uh, and so I started doing it by myself. And uh, I guess I've been around the world, honestly, probably three times, making movies. And uh, I just had so much fun. And when it's an overnight thing, like when they when they when they make me an offer, like on a Friday, and I have to be on the set on a Saturday morning, I will ask for cue cards, and they and they will give me cue cards. And uh, but th that's probably probably one out of five is like that, and uh, so you know it's 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 a whole new world out there right now with uh, with digital because it's fast because what happened what took three months on film takes literally three days not three weeks three days mm, right. everything is ten times faster not not twice yeah. as fast we just shot ten a pilot times. we just shot a pilot on film. Dylan was mad at me for it, but, uh, you know, um, we'll, well, we'll we have were to get using those small mags, yeah. too, so they would run out constantly. So uh, irritating. Roll out, roll out. Uh, it's but, a bad noise. But it's you know what, Eric? It's, so, it's, it's just awesome to see your passion and that you still love it. And you can feel it when you play it. And uh, so what, what, what's, before we get to Entourage and, and you being on that, what's, what's your favorite? Do you have one? Like, what was your favorite, well, whether it was the result or the experience? I've made a lot of movies, so I have several favorites. King of the Gypsies, Star 80, Runaway Train, It's My Party, Love is a Gun, and Purgatory. Those are my half a dozen up tops. No Pope. Wow. Pope is top ten. Pope is top ten. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, qu question. When you're working on The Dark Knight, as somebody that's worked with the best actors and have performed on that level yourself, you're looking at Heath Ledger like, whoa, this dude is... Uh, <laughs> I mean, but was it obvious when you were watching I got, it? I got a story for you. Everybody tell me, oh, man, Heath is so into the part. Be careful around him, man. It's rich, it's touchy. It's touchy. <laughs> okay, whatever. <laughs> Fair enough. So I like show up. The first thing we work together is all of us bad guys and him. And he's got a three-page monologue. He's got quite a bit of work to do today. And I've got like, you know, like five or six lines. Is this the pencil in the uh, Yeah, right. The That's the pencil right, scene, right. right. So, so uh, he shows up. And we're all in our, in, our, in, our, in our like street clothes. And we're having a rehearsal. And he goes through his monologue. And he does it really, blah, 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 and boom. And he turns to all of us. He goes, how am I doing? <laughs> I mean, he's just cool. <laughs> yeah. Serious. Yeah. Serious question. Wow. But sweet. You know, yeah. how am I doing? That's amazing. Uh, and, I like it. Right. And, you know, and nice. uh, we just, he was just fun to be around. He was a cool But cat. did you feel something like unbelievably special going on there? Or? That movie from start to finish was unbelievably special. Yeah. I got just, just the location alone, like, uh, like uh, they told us, and you know, we shot all the Chicago stuff in Chicago, and then they told us now we're going to go to, uh, to, uh, to Pinewood in England. Okay, great. We've all shot at Pinewood. We get there. That was a lie. We're, we're at the old Zeppelin hangar, 30 miles north of London. It's like, it's like three stories tall, three football fields wide, 
and it was just Gotham City. And if you're a movie geek, you're in heaven, dude. It was wow. so cool. You walk in there, Gotham City. Oh my, it was so cool. And so just to like be there made you proud to be an actor. It was so neat. Did he do that rehearsal in like a half a costume? What is he rehearsing? <laughs> when, you, when you're rehearsing a big scene like that, was he in costume or was he sort of in his street clothes? No, he, was like, half? he was like all of us. He was just in his, in his t-shirt and jeans. Wow. Coming to work. You know? <laughs> yeah. He was a sweetheart. He was, he, was, he was not weird. He was not over methody. He was just, he was, he was a lovely man who, um, who obviously made a boo-boo. Yeah. Yeah, terrible. How, how was, how was Voight on Runaway Train? I had lunch with John Voight uh, like four well, years ago. He's intense. But. This is fascinating because I go to work with him and we don't talk much at first. And, uh, uh, but I, um, I change on that character too. I, because he was also kind of a tough thug out of the Bronx. He was that kind of guy. And I said, but he's in for statutory rape. And he's that kind of guy for statutory rape. He's totally not accessible to most people. And I said, I don't want to do that. I want to have him had made a mistake. So he's like this. Well, I didn't know she was 16. I didn't know. You know, he's that kind of guy. <laughs> and so the, uh, the, uh, the uh, director said, okay. Now he was Andrei Konchalovsky, who's a Russian, who does not know anything about accents. <laughs> so, so he, yeah, whatever you want to do, you go do it. <laughs> so, you know, that's what I did. So I brought him into, 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 naivety by how he sounded and uh as opposed to uh you know making him a predator i made him i made him a vulnerable a mistake maker yeah, yeah. i yeah. mean you feel that you feel very childlike did you have boxing training did you box before that now here's a great story so eddie bunker who wrote the movie says to me i did some time with somebody who just got out and i want you to pick him to box in a movie I said, all right, now they're going to line up all the ex-cons. The Mexican with the tattoo, I want you to pick him. I said, okay, no sweat. They line them all up. They're all Mexican. They all have tattoos. So I say, hold on a minute, and I go find Eddie. Eddie, they're all Mexican. They all have tattoos. Which one, dude? Well, he's got a, he has a tattoo of a little boy in a sombrero on his chest. Okay, I go back. I recognize it. I say, I, I want that guy right there. He starts crying right away. Oh, my God, he's crying. <laughs> I said, what's up, dude? I, I can't believe you picked me. <laughs> I'm like, dude, come on, come on. And so I said, uh, so I heard a rumor that y you, were, uh, you were the welterweight champ at San Quentin. Yeah, I was. <laughs> I'm like, dude, you're a badass. <laughs> yeah, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, so you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna teach me how to box because... I'm a half a martial artist, but I'm not a boxer. He goes, yeah, I can teach you how to box. <laughs> so, so he and I my great friend's name was Danny Trejo. And, uh, and, he, and, oh, he, wow. and, we, and wow. we did some boxing. And uh, he's just one of the coolest cats on the planet. And he's my dear friend, will always be. And thanks to Eddie Bunker, he's who I picked for Runaway Train. Wow. wow. Yeah. You, you cool looked story, like man. you could fight, I'll tell you. You definitely looked like you I could wouldn't fight. mess with him. Well, that's thanks <laughs> to Danny Trejo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I want to tell you guys something about... Um, uh, Entourage is the number one most requested from me on Cameo. Really? No yeah. way! Yeah. Wow. They they all want me to do lines from from. Uh, that is. Entourage. <laughs> I mean, I, you know what? Like Martin Landau said something like that to us too, which is crazy. And you know what? It's amazing to hear that. So let's talk about let's talk about how it was working with these guys. And uh, you know, again, I remember. I didn't remember the Jeff Franco part of it, but I remember when we're like. Is there any? We were so nervous to ask whether you would be willing to do that part where there were drugs involved, and of course you're an actor, but you were playing yourself. So did you have any reluctance <laughs> to playing yourself and dealing drugs or selling drugs? First of all, he's dealing not really drugs. playing himself either. It's that's all true. Kinda, right. That's you're true. Vaguely playing was he yourself. Dealing drugs, or we were just getting drugs. Yeah. I've got humor yeah. about all that. Did you have to have humor? I mean, come on. Yeah, we, exactly. We, Can't take we, we, we as actors are, are like are like taken way too seriously anyway. We can't take our Sell seriously, <laughs> come agreed, on, yeah, really, truly. So, what do you remember about that shoot, though? I remember Jeremy being so much fun to know and to work with, and loving him dearly, and him ragging all of you guys. Learn your lines. He was all, <laughs> always always screaming at these cats, but it was it was learn your shit. I, I always said it was. Is, it was a unique experience because if you remember, we were out at Twenty Nine Palms, and we didn't. There was no. 
hotel. I mean, we're pretty easygoing guys, right? But there wasn't a hotel, so we kind of bonded because we stayed in basically, right, Kevin? It was a roach motel. It was a roach motel. You know, and yeah. there, was, there was nowhere to go. We were just out there in the sun. So while it's for sure... One of my top three, four favorite episodes for sure. For me, it was the, physically the hardest one to it, shoot. It because was freezing cold at night and crazy hot during the day. For, for the Irishman, it was hard to be in the well, sun. I liked how all you guys acted casual. And Jim Jeremy was a bit desperate. <laughs> he, was, he was a bit, no, we got to do it. No, 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 stop. <laughs> you know? and, right. uh, but so lovable and so caring. And you know what? That's what Who, you gotta Kevin? have. Yeah, that's what you gotta have on a series. <laughs> no, Jeremy, Jeremy, Jeremy. Jeremy, caring. A lot of words comes to mind. Caring. I love it though. A we lot are. of them. I love it though, Eric. We want you to play. We want you to give these guys some drugs. We want to put you up in a shitty hotel. We want to stick you out in 120 degree weather and With uh, that crazy van you were driving. <laughs> no, the, uh, the, RV. Love, the, the RV. RV. The RV with the camera. With that camper great. With the with the cameras yeah, rigged to, right. up to it. Remember we pull up next to the porn stars. I was so obsessed with finding. You know. From Lost in America, scary. I wanted that RV. It was not easy, by the way, to find an <laughs> RV. But Lost in America, one of my favorite movies with Albert Brooks. I was like, we got to find like the camera from that. We, we got as close as we could. So. You know, Eric, you were really a breath of fresh air for uh, for us, uh, certainly for me, because you were happy at four o'clock in the morning, right? Like you would <laughs> get in the guy, van yeah. and you're yeah. like, man, he's this guy. He's just a happy guy. He's there. He's his wife. It's like he's got all he needs right here. Yeah. He's acting. Is that's like, yo, four o'clock in the morning. Dylan and I haven't had our coffee yet. We're like snarling Give me at each my other. Coffee. Eric gets in the car, it's still dark out, and he's like, What's up, boys? <laughs> Let's go make some TV. You know, you just you just really were it was it was good to you put things into perspective of like, hey, this is a great job and we are lucky to be here. And uh, thank you, brother. And, uh, I love hearing that. You know, and you really you, But you, you can feel how much you love it, and that's that's what's great. What do they ask you what do they ask you on cameo to say? What do they say? Oh, just all kind just everything from uh from uh, um uh about shrooms all the time. <laughs> it's yeah. basically it's about always, shrooms. And, and since everybody's now microdosing, have you noticed that? Yeah, everybody's right. microdosing these yeah. days. So I get a lot of, a lot of like everybody asks me if I'm microdosing. <laughs> I don't, right? Yeah. But uh, I like would if I could. But, <laughs> but but you know, drugs and I aren't friends. You know, yeah. I, yeah. I I will smoke a little pot now and then, mm. but that's it. You know, yeah. I can't get high. I can't do drugs. No, I'm old. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and, and do, I mean the drugs. Do you look back and the did it hurt you? I mean, do you feel, I don't mean physically, but your career. Do you feel like that or no? Well, I think anything that's that's not a positive is a negative. Yeah, say so it's as simple as that. You, you know, don't 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 waste your time in your friend's space by uh, by uh, bringing drugs into your lives. You know, leave it alone. Yeah, it's just easier, dudes. It's just mm -hmm. easier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a young man's game for sure. Oh, isn't it? <laughs> oh yeah, hangovers oh get worse and worse. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Sick and tired of being sick and tired. Ooh, <laughs> good line. Write that down. Like that one? <laughs> Did you make that up, Dylan? No, it's a famous AA. Thing. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it's a friend of Bill. Friend of Bill's. Friend By of the Bill's. way, AA is a fantastic program. Oh my God. Oh yeah. For for anybody, just for life, you don't you don't have to be drunk to go to AA. You should go to AA just to uh, to meet people that are. That are colorful, dude, because because it's great. I love AA. Well, there was a line I don't even remember in the player. It was something about uh, all the all the best meetings happen in AA too. So it's <laughs> yeah, where yeah, where right. you could get the good job. So yeah. I don't know, Dylan, if you want to be a part of that or not. <laughs> <laughs> so well, what else we got? I mean, it's just uh, this is great to just yeah, sit here yeah. and hear those stories. And, and like I said, I hope I hope people go check out Star Eighty. I mean, if you haven't seen Pope of Greenwich Village, I don't know what to tell you. But um, Star Eighty is definitely definitely worth watching it. Oh, I well, Star tell Eighty, just watch it. You know, Bob Fosse made in the best docudrama ever made in that movie. That movie for a true story blows you away. You can't believe it. So, and we and we even shot everything where it really happened, like where. He like killed her. That's where. That's where he Is shot. Is that them. true? Wow. Every and we and we spent the night there the night before. He he said to me, wow. "Okay, we're spending the night there." So we, he goes, yeah, come on, let's go. See any ghosts? <laughs> no, but but it was weird. It was not comfortable. A was, lot it, of was it was it complicated? And and I see, obviously people are were touchy, but was it problematic to do it so soon after the the crime? Well, uh, Bogdanovich calling seems like right. Well, Bogdanovich probably would have called anyway, right? Well, I mean, well, a big help was uh, the uh, the movie you know before Star Eddie was all that jazz, and all that jazz made lots of money and made everybody happy, right? And uh, made a lot of a lot of actors even more you know successful. So it was it was a win 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 win, and it was all thanks to him. So he kind of could have whatever he wanted. And it's he, an interesting second choice, yeah, right? To well, go from all that jazz to Star 80. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's like, talk about wanting to spread your wings. Man, yeah. 
He, well, it's an overused and abused word, but he was a genius, dude. And once you work with a real genius, you know two things, that you're not one and that they are unusual, man. You don't meet them. You don't meet those 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 kind of people. These guys are still trying to figure that out about me. Yeah. <laughs> did, did Bogdanovich, did you ever see him again and talk about this movie after it was done or no? No. 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 I, I can't imagine he was thrilled, but like it is what it is, right? He would have made it about you. Be comfortable, take comfort in that, right? Like, yeah. what do you mean? Well, I'm saying, like, Bogdanovich is a director. He, yeah. He's ready to make a movie. He's not going to not make the movie because somebody calls him and asks him not to make it. Certainly. No, like, but I, I just obviously when it's your girlfriend, of course. you, you I, want I, her to portray well. But Dorothy Stratton, I think, came off, you know, as a great character in that movie. Well, I don't. I wonder what that number was, though. Mariel yeah, Hemingway. Yeah. <laughs> Money wants to know what that buyout well, what was. What was that buyout? You might want to <laughs> take that. You know? Mariel Hemingway does not get enough credit. For, for yeah, her last year, right. because that was hard, man. That was hard to play somebody that simply lovable, not at all with an axe to grind anywhere, but not fake. And she did that, dude. She yeah. did it completely. Did you and ever meet the real straight. Dorothy Stratton before? No, I did yeah. not. Never, yeah. never, never. Yeah, so. Two, two things we got to talk about: Righteous Gemstones. Lucas Haas is on Righteous Gemstones. You are on Righteous Gemstones currently, and Babylon, with it, which is also coming out soon. Today, Righteous tomorrow. Gemstones is my favorite job I ever had in my whole life. Why? Really? Yes. What? Everything about it. Well, 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 well like, first of all, um, we, they're having auditions for it, and there's a character description. And the character description is a character I've had in my back pocket my whole life, and he's half my grandfather and half my first cousin because they're, uh, they're both very similar. And, uh, so, and I've always had this character, and they describe that guy. So, oh, I got to audition for this. I got to show them this character. So my wife and I put it on tape. We sent it to them. And I got the part. And uh, 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 Daniel I love Wright, that he's putting himself no, no, on I tape. Just like I mean, Eric, I mean, these it's guys crazy. don't want to audition. I, like, no, I, here's the thing, guys. I got to tell you. Back in the day when I was your age and even, even, even a bunch younger, when you had an audition, you had to get up, get dressed, learn your lines, brush your teeth, cut your hair, make sure you're shaved. You have to go somewhere you don't know how to get to. You're probably going to get lost. But and you, and am, am I have I have I got enough money to uh, to to take a cab or <laughs> hey, take a subway? It, all kinds of stuffs involved. Now you just go in your living room. It's true. And you're only dressed from the waist up, and you right. shoot. Right. It's so, so great. So but as many takes as, as many takes as, as, you, as you want. But Eric, yeah, how much? How much? Shoot till you're happy. I yeah, like that. I know it's so. But, but Eric, but will it you? It's different for Eric yeah. Roberts. Will Will you do that though? How How many? Will you light it? Will you, you mean sp- now? Right now. Oh, of you- course I. Last <laughs> night. All yeah. the time. But yeah. will you spend a lot of time making sure it looks good looking it over, or you're like, this is it, and go? I mean, no, I'm guessing no, he's prepped no. before. It's an audition that you want to look good in. You make it look good. You yeah. don't you don't you don't send stuff half assed. I love that you're so fucking happy. Eric. I know it's unbelievable. Happy. And you know why? Because you got great <laughs> hair. That's why. <laughs> That's Aaron he, Hollywood he, right there. He also I mean, he, Kim and Gary Cole. He also hair. continues to get hired by these directors that don't have the time to be bothered with people that aren't great. I mean, yeah. Damien Chazelle in Babylon, how does that come about? Do you put yourself on tape and they watch it and go, yo, it's Eric Roberts, it's a no-brainer, boom. Is it that simple? Do well, you read for that? Uh, he, he called for me. Oh, he did? Yeah, and uh, he said, I want you in my movie. I said, cool, I'm there. Uh-huh. So you didn't audition? I mean, Damien Giselle, dude. Damien I mean, Giselle, yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah I'll, be, I'll, I'll be right there. Right. And uh, that's, that's what that was. And uh, But Eric, how do you take the ego out of it? You're an Academy Award-nominated actor. Oh, stop it, No, dude. no, I'm being serious, though, because I think it's important for, for everyone to, to understand that even at this stage of your career, when you've shown every side that you could, I mean, maybe you'll pull not, something else out, but how do you take the ego out of not, it? Well, they should have just offered it to him. Let's call it like it is. Well, it's funny because he... Eric he Roberts, make the offer. He auditions... For for, for Righteous Gemstones, and then he gets the offer for Babylon, right? So I guess it goes both ways, right? Exactly. No, what, what you have to do is look on the side that works for you. At-home auditions are the biggest luxury we've, we've ever been offered. Oh, my God, you get it to you, got it. Right. And uh, yeah. then you only send in the very good one. Right. And, uh, I never had that. I had to go get lost, you know, find a building, find an office, find a person I didn't know, mm. and then and then mess up. Right. I mean, that's what it was like. It was horrible, dude. Right. Uh, can can you guys hear me? Because I can't hear myself. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Er, what'd you some, do to him, stock tip? I, <laughs> Eric, I, I gotta be honest. You you you're inspiring to listen to. You're you're 
You're just a happy guy, and I would think you're microdosing if you didn't tell me. Uh, <laughs> but also, I got to tell you guys this too. Uh, this is not just because I have to go home to her, <laughs> but th- um, my wife is a certifiable genius. But that's not the point. The point is, she creates things out of nothing. Like if somebody wants to have a project with Eric Roberts, and she helps him organize it for them. Right. Then it becomes for Eric Roberts. You know what I mean? But she 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 like helps them. That's she awesome. like she like she like babysits them almost. But she had dozens of these going on all over the country, sometimes all over Europe too. She and and, and it's it's and she, amazing. And she handles it. And and, and Eric, she has. by the way, she's been very it was very fun. obviously this is a podcast, it's different, yeah. but she was all over very easy to efficient to deal with and here you are, you beat you beat Dylan and Doug here. Yeah, it, <laughs> it was a tie between the two of us. I saw him in the parking lot. <laughs> but we definitely beat Doug here. Yeah, no, you didn't. Did yeah, Doug? I did. Ah, there's a lot going on. I don't think it was a point. Don't fight. Is, <laughs> point don't is fight. That it's, it's, but, it's efficient. But Eric, you're now like obviously you're, rarity, you're, you're, a, you're a great showbiz family now. But when you were growing up, were you? Why? Why? How did you all get into this? I mean, wh- was your parents involved in show business? Well, uh, uh, my father started an acting school called the Actors and the Writers Workshop, sponsored uh, by the Martin Luther King Foundation. And what my dad did is he copied Joe Papp, and he had a showmobile, and we toured the underprivileged areas all week, and then we'd have 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 like plays in the park on the weekend. It was called Piedmont Park, which is like our central park in New York. And we and uh, that's how I grew up. And from the time I'm almost precognizant till the time I leave home. So for 18 years, that's all I did. Wow. And um, what does precognizant mean? Uh, when you when you <laughs> when you when you like to remember shit. Right. When you start to remember. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, well, and I have a baby, so I'm thinking is she pre- she's precognizant, right? Now. <laughs> yeah, she's precognizant. <laughs> you should be out in a fucking tour bus working with her for underprivileged kids right now, Kevin. It's precognizant. Sorry, sorry. Uh, At I'm least all... I asked the question, Dylan. I know Dylan doesn't know what precognizant meant. I saw I saw that movie. Uh... <laughs> What what the precogs. <laughs> what was that movie? <laughs> what movie? Uh, precogs. What's a precog? I, I don't know what a precognizant is. Never mind a precog. You're talking about like where people. Tom have... Cruise movie. Oh, What's a precog. Minority Report. That? That's it. That's I it. love Tom yeah. Cruise. I love that actor. He's great. Have you I seen the Tom stunt he did? I was about to say that. Dude, I, I know. I know. God, that was loud. How, how do I they know. let him do? How do they let him do that? Because he won't do the not. movie. If because he he's the boss. I mean, it's it's wild. He he's really right. he owns his own he insurance. Yeah, he can do what he right. wants. Dude. He really is a freakish genius and also a lunatic on a on a certain level. I mean, it's. Did you see this? He's a total winner, dude. Yeah, he is a winner. But Eric, did you see this video of his last stunt that he's doing and how he coordinated? All of it. And I, I did. did. I mean, There's a funny story about him and Matt Damon where Matt Damon is asking him about a stunt. And he said, Oh, I've been dreaming of this stunt for 15 years. I go to the safety guy. Uh, I tell the safety guy. And the safety guy says, You can't do that. So I get a new safety guy. <laughs> <laughs> I it's love true that. Story. That's so I get a new safety guy <laughs> who tells me, Okay, this is how we're going to do, do it. Do you do any of your own He broke or? a bunch of ribs on Oh, uh, yeah. But, Kev, did you see this thing? He, no, dude, he's, no. on a, he's on a dirt bike. And he goes up off the ramp and releases off the bike and then pulls the, does the... A parachute? Parachute. No but, way. but the kind where you have to pull it out. What's it, like base jump Yeah, in. right, right, right. That's the yeah. shootout. It's and, just sick. And have you ever done your own stunts? Around, not like that. Well, I got, a, <laughs> I got a story for you about stunts. So I'm in my third film called Star 80 with Bob Fosse. And Bob, <laughs> and Bob Fosse says, now these guys, for the, for the scene where they come to collect the money you owe... I want to hold you at a 35-story window, but they won't let me unless unless you're in the Stuntman's Association. So I have to I have to make you a member. They held you out that fucking window. So I'm like this: you have to make me a member of the Stuntman's Association. Cool, I'll do stunts. He goes, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, but so they hold out his <laughs> held me at a 35-story window. Jesus. They pull me back in. I throw up. That 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 was real vomit in that scene. I wow. threw up as Eric Roberts. Holy I threw up on my suit. Shit. Yeah. And that that was my improvised line. Hey, that's four hundred dollars suit. <laughs> I mean, they must—they must, they must be holding. They must have strings on you, though. I mean, oh yeah, yeah, I was tied still, off. I was, yeah, Doug, yeah. Doug held me out a window, and I didn't become a member of SAG. Yeah, but that was like six floors. But yeah, like, I want a stun adjustment. I don't think right. he had strings on him, bro. I'm guessing he was safety cords. Doug's like, you know, you had like little, uh, little rope, like little tie. I'm, yeah. gi- I'm giving dental like floss, a uh, layman's dental term. Floss. I'm not talking. But about anyway, after cords. that, I think I'm a man. I can do anything. I hung out a 35 story window for a long time, a whole bunch of times too. I did that. I yeah, I threw up on myself, but that's okay. So, 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 
I started doing stunts. You know, did you I jump sh- off the runaway train? Did you jump uh, well, off? Here's what happened. So I'm doing my own stunts for three movies. Then we get to a two runaway train. And I'm a John John stunt double. And we're on the outside of the train walking. And we're all tied off. But we're walking. And it's cold. And it's wet. And it's icy. And we're going about, about 40 miles an hour. And I slip about this much. And I realized, wow, I could be dead. <laughs> and so I said, get me inside. I don't want to do this shit anymore. Yeah. And sent from that day to this, the only son I've done is this. <laughs> oh, that hurt. <laughs> that's <laughs> all I've done. I'm all about the letting both. the stunt guys do their thing. I yeah. Stay in your lane. I got three herniated discs because of that, so There's I don't a mess around anymore. We have stuntmen. Yeah. Stay yeah. in Let your lane. Let these guys do their <laughs> Let thing. Let them do their thing. Well, Eric, Make I me got... look good, bro. <laughs> well, Eric, I, I got to thank you for coming this in. This is amazing. You're, you're yeah. Really, yeah, definitely, Eric. Great your your energy you, and your vibe, obviously. And you look great, too. You're looking lean. <laughs> it's all Lee. plastic surgery, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you don't do you have, have all, an ounce. Do you have all your star eighty questions off your off your chest. Yeah, I want Doug like do just an episode. He's like a super fan, <laughs> but but I want to got I a want, very very Paul Snyder vibe going on over here. <laughs> Am I creeping you out? <laughs> I want to also say it again. Your Mariel Hemingway does not get enough of credit credit for that movie because I am so dynamic because of what that guy did. Yeah. So yeah. I get all the credit. She's great in that movie. Watch she that is. movie. Not Watch an easy role. Not an easy Not role. an easy no. part to pull off, dude. And she did. Yes, she, she did. Yeah. And she she's likable. Yeah. How do you be likable and be that girl? That's hard. Wow, yeah, no, hard, she really dude. she brings that naivete to it, and yeah. it's it's a fantastic movie. Yeah, I got all my questions, but I, I mean, really, more importantly, is uh, we were grateful when you did the show oh. and coming here to do this. You just you, you know you have a, an energy that's really uh, intoxicating. I enjoy you guys. And check him out in Babylon. Babylon, yeah. which you got to check out, and uh, Righteous Gemstones as well. So, yeah. Eric, thank you so much for coming in, man. This is great. Yep. I love you. Later, you give him that chocolate bar. Victory. <laughs> I want chocolate. <laughs>